Good morning, boys and girls. This morning, we're going to do some math and about geometry, but we're going to do it from a different perspective. And we're going to use a little bit about First Nation teachings in our geometry this morning. And uh, does anyone know what I have in my hand? Put your hand up if you know. Yes? Red willow? That's, that's right, red willow. Red willow in the First Nation culture is a medicine. And uh, in my family, we pick the red willow in the early spring because that's when we say the medicine comes from the ground and it goes into the stem and that's when the, the medicine is the, the best medicine in the stem. Just before the little uh, willows or the little buds start growing, that's when the, the medicine is the strongest. We use red willow um, for teas. We scrape the red willow off, we let it dry and we soak it in water and if somebody has a really bad cold or things like bronchitis or pneumonia. Uh, red willow tea is very, very good for that. It's very healing. Uh, people who have arthritis or sore bones or sore muscles and you drink red willow tea, that's really good for them too. Uh, some people have eczema and uh, they have itchy skin and we take the red willow and we hollow the bark and let it dry and then we'll put it in the bathtub water and people with eczema bath in that water and it really soothes the skin. So we say the red willow uh, is a very hardy plant. A lot of farmers don't like red willow because they treat it like a weed and it grows very quickly and it comes back naturally. But farmers don't like it because it grows in their fields quite a bit so they want to get rid of it. But as First Nation people, we say red willow is strong because it keeps coming back to us because it keeps wanting to tell us, I have medicine for you. I need to be with you. I, I have medicine for you. So it's a strong medicine. We also make our sweat lodges with the red willow. And our red willow is involved in our sun dances too. So red willow is very important for us. So when we pick the red willow out of season, uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the dream catchers. We want to make a dream catcher. Um, this is too hard. If I bend it, it'll break. So when we go picking, we also bring tobacco with us. And then when we're harvesting the tobacco, the red willow, we take a little bit of our tobacco and we put it on the ground and we thank the red willow for growing for us, becoming our medicine and becoming part of our class. So I put a little bit of tobacco on the ground and then we start harvesting the red willow. And in my little plant hut, or my little storage bin. I have lots of medicine plants in there. And I have this one pail and it's full of red willow. And uh, in the winter time, it's hard like rock. So I'll soak it in the tub. And I'll soak it for about two days. And that way you can start bending it. So today we're going to all make a dream catcher. And a long time ago, we would use red willow and we would use sinew. And sinew is made from the stomach lining of the an animal. And nowadays, it's made from cow stomach. But a long time ago, they would make it from the buffalo or the bison. And they would uh, have it strung. They would dry it out, and they would braid it. And this is the strongest rope you could ever find, is the, the sinew. So a long time ago, dream catchers were made from sinew. The dream catcher comes from the Ojibwe, the Anishinaabe people in the east. and. Um, it came in a legend where someone had a vision. They had bad dreams all the time. In the vision, they were told um, why they say a spider. A spider came to visit and said, I'll help you sleep at nights, and I'll help you to get rid of your bad dreams. And you make a web like mine. And he showed that person how to make a web. And he said, you put a bead or a crystal or a rock or a shell. Because a long time ago, we didn't have beads, but we had shells. And they would put a shell in here, just one. And I see a lot of dream catchers with lots of beads all over, very decorated. But this is the only purpose that the dream catcher was there for, to catch the bad dreams. And when the sun rises in the east, that's why we say we hang the dream catcher on your east window. So when the sun filters through, it cleans the webs through. But at night, that's when you usually have your bad dreams. At night, the bad dreams try to come through, but they get caught in the bead. So it stores your bad dreams. So that's the legend of dream catcher. And traditionally, we would have to go through a ceremony to accept the dream catcher in our lives. But now you can buy them in stores. They're mainly made in China. Um, like I said, when our family makes our dream catchers, we use the red willow. But when you look at the dream catcher, you'll see the different geometric shapes. So today I'm going to show you how to make a dream catcher. And then we're going to uh, photocopy our dream catchers and then learn about geometric designs.
Okay, so right. I'm going to take some of your dream catches that you've made very well, and they're all different sizes and shapes, well done. And I'm going to photocopy these, and we're going to work with some further geometric designs using our dream catches. Okay, today we're going to identify what kind of geometric designs that you can find within the dream catchers. And I Xeroxed a whole bunch of dream catchers that you created. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut the geometric designs out, glue the designs on the sheet, and you're going to identify what shape exists within that dream catcher. All right, any questions, anyone? No? All right, let's work.